Mission Impossible 7, Dead Reckoning Part 1, uh, came out, of course, last year. I thought the movie was really good. Was it the best of the Mission Impossible movies so far? No, not the best, but I had a really good time with it. And despite the fact that there were some people who thought it was going to be a billion-dollar film, despite the fact that no Mission Impossible film's ever been a billion-dollar film, it's fair to say that the movie kind of underperformed a little, coming in the five, the mid-$500 million range, right? A lot of people thought more was going to come from that. Which turns all eyes now to Mission Impossible 8, or also known as Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 2. Will more people get out to see it? Will it be able to carry on some momentum? Will it be able to build up the box office? All that kind of stuff. Where is the story going to go? Well... Apparently, we're going to have to wait a little bit longer. Well, scratch that, a lot longer for Mission Impossible 8 because it's being reported that it's been pushed almost a full year. This comes just from the folks over at The Hollywood Reporter who say the following. Tom Cruise's next Mission Impossible movie is departing the 2024 box office calendar. The eighth installment in the Action Spy franchise appears to be dropping the second half of its previous title, Dead Reckoning Part 2, with a new title expected to be announced later uh, at a later date. Paramount and Skydance have pushed back the film back to May 23rd, 2025, off of its previous date of June 28th, 2024. The feature shut down production to allow for the movie stars and the cast to promote Dead Reckoning Part 1. Then the SAG actor strike, uh, strike hit it in mid-July. And again, that comes to us from The Hollywood Reporter. So, look, I think a lot of us were kind of expecting that there might be a delay to Mission Impossible. I'm just going to call it Mission Impossible 8 for now. Uh, due to the actor strike, they haven't been able to go back to work. They have no idea when they'll be able to go back to work. Even if the actor strike were to end tomorrow, everybody's schedules have been all thrown into chaos now. So I get it. I was kind of hoping, though, that it wouldn't be pushed back that far. Like now we're literally waiting till around mid 2025 and they're going to lose some of the momentum they had. It's unfortunate. Rob, I'll tell you one of the interesting things, though, that came out of that report is the fact that they're saying they might give it a new title, which I love, but I don't know how you give it a new... Look, I'll be honest with you. I thought Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 was not a great title. I didn't think that was a great title for the film. Not that the title makes the movie any better or any worse, but I didn't like the title. So I love the idea of trying to change the title. But how do you change the title when you just called the first one Dead Reckoning Part 1? If you just call it like Mission Impossible, big boom, like a lot of people are going to ask, where's part two? Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, Mint Mobile. Signing your life away to a big wireless provider is kind of like being trapped on a roller coaster from hell. Sure, it looks like fun at first. They probably even threw in a free phone, but now you can't get off. Month after month of insane bills and unexpected thrills, like overages and surprise fees. If that sounds like your current big wireless plan, it's time to get off the ride with Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are just $15 a month. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for just 15 bucks a month. You guys know before I came to Mint Mobile, I was paying triple what I am paying now on the standard big wireless plan, and I will never go back. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and high speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with all your existing contacts. To get your new unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped right to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to just 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia. Anyway, what do you think about them delaying this movie where did part one land for you on your overall scale of how much you liked it compared to the other mission impossibles and what do you think about this claiming that they might actually change titles what do you think about this well first of all you know i i've loved chris mccory's previous mission impossible movies i loved rogue nation and i really loved fallout so i had a lot of expectations for this and when i was watching it i really enjoyed it the action scenes were great. It was beautifully photographed. I was having a lot of fun. But when it was over and I started to think about the plot, it kind of fell apart for me. Um, and then I went and saw it again and I was like, this makes not a lick of sense. But I didn't care because the action was so great. But when you're making a two-parter, 
you know, when I think about maybe the greatest two-part movie ever made besides Godfather 1 and Godfather 2, which wasn't intended to be a two-parter at first, was Infinity War and Endgame. Mm, and right. those movies those movies worked so well together. And when you get to the end of Dead Reckoning, what's supposed to happen? Like, it seemed like, okay, the movie ended, but there's this AI out there that really didn't do much. I mean, if an AI is supposed to be villainous, it threw a great party in that movie. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm like, okay, so this AI is running rampant. What's so bad about it out there? Like, what's it done that's so threatening? And and I think that, and of course, Esai Morales was great, and he fell into a cart, you know, <laughs> and he's still alive. But I'm like, where's where's the thrust of the story going to go? And And I thought that was odd. So I can understand why they might change the movie, but then are they going to pull a Lucas when Lucas – changed the opening crawl of star wars and made it episode four a new hope so it's no longer going to be called dead reckoning part one because if there's never a part two how does that work yeah i'm i'm not really clear i'll tell you what though well i did walk out scratching my head a little bit about sorry some of the hair in this is getting in my mouth <laughs> uh well i did watch walk out thinking that some of the ai storylines felt unraveled like wait a minute the ai right. can do this how did this not happen or how did this not work they also took some big swings like one of the things that i like about the mission impossible franchise is they're often not afraid to like take out some of their characters and oh, totally you know they they killed a key significant character of the last number of mission impossible films in it that i think caught a lot of people by surprise i know i gasped when she died in the film, I'm like, wow. So yeah. like they, they try to raise the stakes. The action was fantastic. Like that train sequence, Rob, at the end of the film, that entire sequence, I'm really surprised they didn't, they never really showed any of it in much of the marketing, but that train sequence, like I thought topped the motorcycle stunt. And really they just showed us a ton of that. Even if the story with the AI thing is a little weird and a little still very much connected to hunt for red October for some reason. I I'm still really looking forward to the next one, you know, whatever the title will be. So, Oh it will, dude, me too. Because look, I, before I saw dead reckoning, I watched all the rest of the franchise and, and you forget like mission impossible two is, is kind of a romance. <laughs> it's about Tom Cruise trying to save Tandy Newton. Yeah. From the bad guys. And then mission impossible three, he's like no longer, he's training people in the field and he's getting married. <laughs> You know, I'm like, well, that's kind of weird, uh, but it it still works. And then four, five, and six seem very much more along the line what they wanted that franchise to be. So all of them have th great joy to be had. Even two, which people seem to not like much. I, I'm like, this is a John Woo movie. I love it. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campy Show podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.